In this episode, we're going to take a 75-minute manual process and get it down to either 13 or 9 seconds, depending on whether we want it to be safe or not. Shout out to all my friends who contributed to this video long ago. Uh, I was never got to publish it. Hurricane Ian came through, and we were in hurricane prep mode. It's a weekend now, about a month later, and everything is great for us, and I wanted to get this out there. So thanks to everyone who sent in their ideas and videos, and sorry that we're just getting this up now. Last Tuesday, I got an email. YouTube has notified me that someone placed a comment. This poor guy. How can I insert a row after t every two rows with one stroke? I have 4,000 rows of data in five columns. That's about 75 minutes of manual work. I said, that's not going to be fun. I turned on the video recorder, and in one minute and 58 seconds, I solved the guy's problem with 200 rows of data. I talked through it slowly. I said, I know you're looking for one stroke, but this, I think, is the fastest way that I would do this. And it's up there unlisted. That means there's no transcript, no cover art. Just, hey, you know, here, go check this out. But then the next day, I'm starting to think about this. You know, just in case someone else has the same problem, I should formalize this. So there's a short 53 seconds. I do it again. I explain it, you know, put all the SEO in there. So if someone has the same problem, then they can find it and, you know, not spend 75 minutes of their life. So the next day, I wake up to a complaint on social media that it's too slow, too many steps. Well, hang on. I didn't say it was a race. And I need to be able to explain it to the guy. I didn't know it was a race, but if it is a race. All right, so 75 minutes is the manual method. Uh, 158, 53, I turned on the video recorder, didn't explain anything, did it in 17 seconds. Here, let's go watch that. I set up an alternating column of ones and A. One A, one A, one A. And then I use go to special to isolate just the numbers. And then insert a row, that takes forever. Delete the helper column and we're done. You know, look, I know I'm not the fastest. That's why ever since the beginning of Modelov and the FMWC and this thing on ESPN, I'm over here as a judge, right? I don't use Excel 40, 60, 80 hours a week anymore. These people do. These people are the fastest in Excel, right? So I sent out a note. I said, all right, here's the problem. What's your fastest way? And Peter SS at the Mr. Excel board took a look at my method and realized that I was wasting two steps, right? My 17 second method. And Anoop Agarwal, who was one of the competitors on ESPN, he was nice enough to record his method. And he apologized. He says, I use the mouse too much, not the keyboard shortcuts. And he came in at 14 seconds. Here, let's watch that. This method by Peter and Anoop is better than mine because they are using blank cells in every other one instead of the letter A. It saves a few seconds, 14 seconds, uh, to complete the whole task. Now look, I realize I sound like a fanboy, but Dermot is the fastest guy in Excel, right? If there's any ever a competition, my money's going to be on Dermot. And I sent Dermot a note. Oh, in, in 57 seconds, he explained the whole thing, but the guts of his answer took 13 seconds. Let's go watch Dermot's 13. I'm going to say int, sequence, rows, those rows, comma, 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 steps of a half, close, close. Then we're going to take a sequence of that, copy value paste, sort, and delete that. And there you go. Uh, hopefully about 12 seconds or so. Let me know if you can find a faster way. You know what I love about that the most? <laughs> there at the end. He says, look, this is my method. Do you have something faster? He doesn't say he's the fastest. I bet he's the fastest. But he invites other people. And Dearman truly would be fascinated if there's a faster way, right? That That's just the way he is. Well... <laughs> it was about 12 hours later. I get a second note from Jeremy. He says, I've been thinking about it. Uh, you know, early on when I did this, I could have done this instead. And now Jeremy has it down to nine seconds. And sequence count. Steps I have. Sequence that. All right, so there you go. 75 minute manual process down to less than 10 seconds. Surprisingly, though, Dermot is not going to be the winner. The problem with these questions at YouTube is we can't see the person's computer. We can't see their spreadsheet. They just give us two sentences, and I imagine that maybe it looks like this. All right, and if it did look like that, then a lot of great solutions came in. The ones I showed you, but also two threads at the Mr. Excel message board with VBA, uh, 
sequence function, power query, let, wrap rows, a couple of great lambda functions. But it was Dermot who said, you know, hey, you got to watch out. Maybe there are formula dependencies between each group of two rows. Like maybe our person over here on YouTube is trying to put those blank rows in because it's a two row record where we have invoice number, date, quantity, item, revenue, profit with accumulated totals going down. I mean, Dearman said his method would not work with those those dependencies between groups. And I think just about every formula method would have a problem. But the method proposed by Peter SS and Anoop with go to special blanks and then insert rows is the fastest one that continues to preserve those links between each individual group. Without really knowing what the original data looked like, it's kind of like we have to be prepared for the worst. And I've seen some things that are really bad. It's not inconceivable that our original person wanted those blank rows to separate the individual records from each other. Hey, I want to send a, a huge shout out and thank you to my friends who are the fastest people in Excel for all their great ideas and all their elegant ideas. And I want to thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next time for a better netcast from Mr. Excel.